I have been in worse shape than I am now, and better shape than I am now. For me, here is the sweet spot. Being worse would obviously be worse, but being better would not necessarily be better. You won't hear that message very often because people that make a living on social media from other people unsuccessfully trying to be like them lose money if they say, actually, you're good as you are. I don't really make recommendations here. I'm not a coach, I'm not an expert, I'm not your mum. But in this video, I'll explain where I'm at, why it does make me above average, <laughs> but still miles from where I could be, and yet perfectly happy with that. I got a couple of emails last week that prompted this video. One from a triathlete, not a pro, just a hobbyist, but all his spare time, hours a day, every weekend went into this. His wife, his kids never saw him. Childish. He was asking me, how do you balance training with life so you don't come home from every workout expecting to discover the locks are being changed and your meal prep containers are left on the driveway with divorce papers? I said, by actually balancing training with life, you sound like you're punching yourself in the face and then asking why your nose hurts. The second was from somebody along similar lines, asking, how do I fit everything in? How do you find time to do so much? I said, by not doing very much. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to show the moderate amount of effort I put into my diet, my training, my health, my fitness, the above average results that does give me, and why you don't necessarily need anything beyond that. And again, none of this is a recommendation, but hopefully it'll be useful for people like those who emailed me to see that you don't need to spend every waking moment exercising. Try and do about 20 of these a day. Also may be helpful for people just starting out on their fitness journey. Those who are run walking their 5K park run in 45 minutes like I used to. For them to understand that the 19 minutes I do it in now, or the 16 minutes the really fast people do it in, those don't need to be your targets. Get yourself under half an hour, you're better than most. Work on getting faster if you want, but really once you're sub 30, you're already doing great. Your physical health, your mental health will be improved. If you wanna maintain at that level, good stuff. And as a father of four, including some gym-obsessed teenagers, don't get me started on kids hitting the gym for the first time. Should their aim be to get stronger, bigger, better? Yeah, probably. Should it be to develop massive delts and deep quad separation and start worrying about vascularity and muscle insertion points? No. Can it be? Yes. But realize, people you see on Instagram, wealthy from looking like that, are A, genetically gifted in a way that statistically you're probably not, and be artificially enhanced in a way that your mum probably won't let you be. They're not at the end of a road everyone can travel if they choose. They're at the end of their road. You're on your road. Different obstacles potentially going to very different places. If your genetic gift is music or creativity or rocket design, copying the path a pro bodybuilder took to capitalise on their gifts won't make you a pro bodybuilder. It'll just make you frustrated and ultimately disappointed. However, being inspired by the work ethic of a pro bodybuilder to fly down your road while staying fit and healthy is great. Inspiration, good. Emulation, dodgy ground. So me, the claim that I am the perfect level of fitness, a bit arrogant, so let me clarify. Perfect for me. If I was a professional athlete, my level of fitness would be terrible. So my point is not that everyone, or indeed anyone, should be emulating me. But I am reasonably confident in saying that here, where I'm at, doesn't come with the disastrous health implications of being where I used to be, and nor is it way beyond the reach of most people in the way that many who are fitness influencers are. On the bell curve of fitness, I'm above average, but only just. So let me explain what a typical day looks like for me, and then what that allows me to do. As I go through this, it will hopefully become evident that I am applying effort. I'm incurring costs in time and money, sacrificing other things, but not so much that it's disruptive to those that are around me. It's not depriving those who depend on me. It's not damaging other important parts of my life. In short, this requires work, but it's doable by most. So I wake up every morning, not particularly early, half seven, maybe eight. Kids have gone to work or school by then. The kitchen's quiet. I begin with a coffee. Despite being a fitness influencer of sorts, that coffee is not filmed in slow motion in order that I can begin every video with a clip of it, but coffee is made. Then 10 minutes on what I call habit traps, setting things up for later in the day that will make it hard to avoid those good habits. A bad habit trap is shops sticking in the sweets by the checkout. These are my good ones. 
I go to my supplements cupboard. It's a good habit trap in itself. I keep it well stocked. It's not contaminated with other kitchen stuff. It's neat and tidy. If half of what I wanted was missing, if I was having to move pot noodles and tins of beans out of the way to get to it, if it was a mess, they'd all be reasons not to bother. I take my green shake every morning without fail. Vitamins, minerals, a pint of water, with it a few tablets, a couple of extra vitamins, because I'm plant-based, some probiotics, some omega supplements, and irrespective of the actual nutritional benefit of all that, the psychological benefits are huge. It is hard, after drinking a pint of green liquid, not to feel like you're someone who takes their health seriously. It's almost a physical impossibility to follow up with a bowl of Cocoa Pops. It would feel wrong, like eating donuts in the gym. Inappropriate. From there, a small amount of meal prep, not much. I scoop out some protein powder that I'll be taking after my gym session. I set it aside with my creatine, my beta alanine dose that I have later as well. I check that what I plan to have for lunch is in the fridge. And that's about it. What I want during the day when I walk into the kitchen is for the things that I should be consuming to be ideally ready, but at the very least available to be consumed. Where I run into trouble is when I walk into the kitchen and nothing presents itself. And now I'm thinking, what shall I have? Maybe the donuts they told me were inappropriate to have in the gym. I want to be caught by good habits. I then go to work. But the first thing I do when I'm sat here is I look at my diary. There's a workout at the gym in mid-morning. There's a cardio session every evening. What I then do here every day is work out whether those are going to work at those slots. Maybe I need to move the gym session to the afternoon. Maybe I need to cancel the evening cardio completely because I'm going out. Nothing is fixed in stone. Exercise is important, but it's not the most important thing. If I look at my diary, I just have no time that day. I don't work out. I'm not that bothered. If it happened the next day and the next day, then Jen and I would probably sit down and work out what's going on because it doesn't sound like things are going in the right direction. But day to day, I'm pretty relaxed. After that, I start work. And this job means my day is writing or editing or filming or brainstorming. People think my job is exercise. No, it's not. Despite what my Instagram looks like, that's not my life. I don't live in the gym. I'm not jogging or cycling 24 seven. My Instagram is an advert for people to see and think, looks interesting, I'll go check out this guy's YouTube. It's like a five second trailer for a two hour movie. And most people's Instagram in this world it's so curated and filtered, it's really a five second trailer using footage that never even shows up in the movie. So I'm here, a lot, but I'm mindful of taking a break from the screen every half an hour. I spend most of my time standing at this standing desk and drinking water on a regular basis. So it's quite easy to incorporate little things to make sure that this big chunk of my day is not time that leaves me with poor posture and dehydration and a headache. It'd be very easy to not bother worrying about those things, but the effort to do so doesn't seem unreasonable for the returns. At some point, I will then go to the gym. Probably, I have no program, no plan. I just go and wing it most days. It could be a gym bro chest workout one day. I could be bouncing backwards and forwards between the treadmill and the rowing machine doing intervals the next. People think that because I've got a high rocks competition coming up in the diary for the end of January that I'm training for that. Not really, not specifically. My training jumps all over the place so that I can do the same. I could run 100K tomorrow. In fact, I did my last 100K off zero training or go do a high rocks. How well will I do? More on that in a second. The point is I don't go crazy in the gym and it's not highly structured. Is that approach, that intensity, the most effective way to make gains and improvements? No. Is it the most effective way to make sure I enjoy it and go? Yes. And sometimes it will be more structured. In a couple of weeks before that high rocks, I will give thought to what I'm gonna be doing. Or I might be joining Jenna on one of her training sessions. And because she's very new to exercise and she can't just walk in the gym and make something up off the top of her head, she does have a personalized program. I might join her on that. Typical gym session, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, quite often only 30, occasionally going over the hour. I then come home, have my protein shake, and back to work. At some point during the day, I'll have more food. Most of the time I do intermittent fasting, but really whether that means my first meal of the day is at 11, 12, 1, 2 p.m., depends on how I feel. It will normally be something pretty clean, something pretty healthy, especially right now, because I'm currently 100 kilos. I'm one of the five or six less for high rocks, so I'm eating a calorie deficit slightly. Obviously, I've experienced weight issues in the past, and I've put time and effort into understanding calories and basic nutrition. I'm not eating mindlessly, but equally, I am partial to sprinkling a couple of chocolate chips into my protein shake before blending it, and nothing will stop me doing that. To me, that's balance. 
And then in the evening, I might train again. Or maybe if I never had time to train that day, it'll be my first session of the day. The actual gym in the evening is packed, so it's normally done at home, maybe a ride on the Zwift bike, uh, I might be doing something else in the garage, or just out for a run. Again, good habit traps means those things are easy to do. The bike is always ready to go in the garage. My trainers are lined up and ready to go. If I'm thinking, mm, shall I go for a run? There is very little that lies between that thought and hitting the pavement. You know why we bite our fingernails? Because they're right here. If you had to go find them, you'd leave them alone. The same applies to my running shoes. I walk in the garage, they're right in my face. And I usually follow that evening session up with something a bit more recuperative. I love to sauna five or six times a week. Amazing way to relax in the evening. I might do some foam rolling, uh, some massage gun. I've recently started hanging upside down. Makes my back feel great. I'm upside down. I was telling a friend about my evening routine the other day. And he said, how do you find time for all that? I said, well, hang on, what, a 30 minute bike ride and a 25 minute sauna? We looked at his evening, he's doing three hours of TV. I said, how do you find the time for that? Oh, at the weekend, not much changes, except the gym session might turn into a longer outdoor activity, maybe a long run with the dogs, maybe out on the gravel bike, kayaking, it's active fun. If that all sounds like an excessive amount of focus on my nutrition, time spent exercising, worrying about recovery and injury prevention that you'd find impossible to even consider, then either you have an incredibly busy life, maybe caused by childcare issues, having to work a couple of jobs, maybe a caregiver to relatives, whatever the reason, you have my sympathy. I get that I have a large amount of good fortune, which helps me out. Or you're prioritizing different things, your hobbies, TV, social media, taking the kids to after school activities, and that isn't wrong, it's just a different choice. What would be wrong is prioritizing those things and then moaning that you're 100 pounds overweight, but don't get to be selfish like me and fixate on what's best for you because there's no time to cook a decent meal or do an exercise because you're too busy scrolling through Facebook and then watching little Billy at soccer practice every evening. Because when Billy is 25, he might rather that instead of you being there to see him trip over the football, you were jogging around the block before coming back to pick him up and as a result, still alive and not dead from a heart attack before he was 21. Sometimes being selfish provides amazing results for other people too. And so what does me living like this give me? Athletic performance in a second, because the first thing that living like this gives me is the opportunity to occasionally eat terribly and enjoy doing so. The opportunity to take a couple of days off from the gym and not stress about it. And most importantly, the opportunity to acknowledge that the really important thing in my life is just lying in bed every night and thinking, am I happy with how the day went? And not getting bogged down in measuring myself based on the metrics I'm being told to use by some shirtless oiled up lump on Instagram. So athletic performance. Here's what I'm not. I'm not very good at anything. Every time I talk about above average, somebody will pop up in the comments and say, well, you're hardly just above average, are you? Aren't I? Strength? The last time I tried to bench press my body weight, Jenna had to rescue me from near death. I don't think I've ever squatted my body weight in my life. I once managed to deadlift twice my body weight, but my back has literally never been the same since. Hence, I hang upside down every day. I'm upside down. I even do chin-ups with an elastic band so I can get more than six in a row. Endurance? Yeah, I've run a couple of ultra marathons, but I've been running for well over 10 years. And I still come off the back of one of those events needing to go to the hospital. Oh. <laughs> I did Reading Half Marathon last year, and little old ladies were coming past me in the final mile. And the only way I got onto an age group podium for a 10K was by going to a really poorly attended event at my local duck pond. <laughs> General fitness, high rocks, some of my rowing times, sure they're not too bad, but those are events that really lend themselves to my sort of natural physicality more than my fitness. I'm not doing anything at a genuinely high level. That said, I am above average. The average person running 100K doesn't need a hospital, they need a morgue. Picking up 200 kilos off the floor, no matter what it did to my spine, is still a chunk of weight. And when I go to park run, an event I used to finish at the back of, I'm now only a couple of minutes behind the winner. And if I don't make the top 10 or 15, I'm disappointed. Also, more importantly for me, I just like to feel that I could go and try any physical endeavor and be better than the average beginner. I've done some pretty wacky sports for the channel and it's been obvious that I could go far in them if I wanted to. <sighs> oh, shit. 2.25. And I got all of that from a starting point that was low with just moderate but consistent and easily replicatable effort. All the while watching videos from influencers and influencers 
getting massively motivated by them, getting inspired, but consciously aware not to emulate them, not to be distracted from my road, even when it looked like their road and my road might be similar. Instead, I enjoyed traveling forward along the effort and reward curve where modest increases in one give comparable increases in the other. Until now, where large increases in effort would only yield small increases in reward. The increasing gains have plateaued. For example, I run a 19 minute 11 second 5K. To knock off those 11 seconds would be cool, but I don't even know where to start. Probably with the chocolate chips and the protein shake. Either way, why bother? I get to experience plenty of other cool stuff, better stuff. I don't need those 11 seconds. I don't need another 10 kilos on my squat or to be able to bench press without having my wife help me out. That one would be good. Remember this, when you're nearly 50, certainly 60, 70, 80 years of age, and you look back at the cool stuff you experienced, your life highlights, for most people, most of it will not be specifically related to something you worked incredibly hard to achieve. That's just not how life rolls the dice and presents stuff to you. There's a saying, you make your own luck. No, you don't. If you did, it wouldn't be luck. But you can expose yourself to luck and make sure you're able to capitalize on it if it comes along. When a surfer catches the wave of a lifetime, they didn't make that wave, they didn't cause that wave. They just need to get themselves into the ocean, be fit and healthy and be able to surf and then wait. Off the top of my head, uh, my life highlights are things like the cool things I saw when traveling on my motorbike, uh, getting married to the person I did, doing this, being alive despite looking like I did 20 years ago and now able to watch my kids become adults. None of those things would have been achieved if I hadn't started to apply some effort. I did need to be fitter and healthier than most to ride through Namibia to get that person to go for a coffee with me because she wasn't going out with the other guy, to not look ridiculous talking about health on here. But I didn't need to be anything more than just better than most. Looking like the rock would not have made the Milky Way at night in the desert look brighter. None of my cool experiences required me to be better than everyone. I didn't even need to be the best I could be. Just get above average, get in the ocean, wait for the waves.